This is a Tech This Out exclusive. Of the 7.2 billion people on Earth, 3 billion have internet access. 2.1 billion are using social media right now. Tech This Out News, coming to you live. Now, I'm going to take you back in time, man, to 1971 or 72. And I was a, a, a student at the University of Nevada in Reno. Mm. I was going to go up there with my girlfriend. And I left San Francisco State. And I, and I moved up to Nevada. And I was going up Interstate 80 from San Francisco to Nevada, which is about three and a half, four hours away. And as I crossed the state line of California, Nevada, I looked up at a huge billboard. The billboard was black and white. It was just two colors, black and white. It had a skull and crossbones on it, this huge skull and crossbones on this huge billboard. I was driving by, had hair to my waist. I'm smoking a joint, and I'm looking up at this billboard. I'm driving a 1970 Volkswagen Bug. Going up to Nevada, because we're talking about the different, every state had different Love. ways of dealing with things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know. Uh, Nevada being a redneck state at that time, and a lot of people could say it still is, um, very conservative, ran by the casinos, right? Okay. Vegas and, and Tahoe and Reno. And who ran those casinos back in the day in the 60s and prior to that were basically, uh, you know, New York mobsters. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was all mafia money. Uh, Jewish mo uh, money, uh, you know, if you look at the Goodfellas, you could look at this, that, and the other, uh, the movies that came out about it, The Godfather even, they, they went into Vegas, right? So my point being is Nevada was very freaked out about their gaming licenses, you know. And if you, if you got in trouble with any kind of dope, mm. heroin, uh, pills, uh, if they knew if the gaming uh, committee in Nevada that oversaw uh, gambling, legal gambling in Nevada, if they saw any of that happening in or around a casino or any of the principals uh, having anything to do with dope, they would yank their gaming license, which meant billions of dollars to these mobsters, right? So that state was locked down tight against marijuana, even though around them, California, Oregon, Washington, and Colorado in the 60s and the 70s were blazing. Nevada stayed the state that was locked back like it was in the 1920s when it came to marijuana. So I'm driving, having said that, or say, I'm going up to the University of Nevada because I'm in love with a six-foot blonde named Mary, and she's up there, and I'm going to go hang for a year or so. And I'm going across the state lines, and I look up at this billboard with a big uh, uh, crossbones, a skull and crossbones on it, and it was very succinct and to the point. It said, in Nevada, colon, possession of marijuana, seven years. Mm. Sales of marijuana, life. Think about that, man. So there's people still locked up. 1971, man. So, so Don, I mean, we're, yeah. there are people yes, who sir. are locked up under the provision of that law during that era who are still in prison, correct? I would imagine, you know, there there are some. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're talking now, we're talking, what, 30, 40, 50 years almost ago, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine a lot of those people got in there for 20, 25 years, and let's say they got busted in 70, and 20 years later it's 1990, and perhaps, I haven't dug into it, but perhaps the court goes, okay, you know, you spent 20 years, this law is a little bit archaic, you know, we're a little bit looser about it now in 1990 than we were 1970. That's all you had was marijuana. That was your only offense. We're going to let you go. You don't have to serve life. I would imagine that's kind of how it went. But, oh, yeah, there are some cats. There are some cats that served, that, that, that served some very serious time back in the day for, for a joint. Ain't that some shit? Absolutely, man. Let, let's Absolutely. let's switch gears for a minute, Dominic. I want to um, speak about the Bay Area um, and farmers and how Northern Cal 
begin began producing cannabis. I know you spoke on Humboldt County and going through there. Now Humboldt County is kind of known, world renowned, um, for being, you know, a home for cannabis, marijuana, whatever you want to call it. What is that like for you observing that uh, when you talk about being in 2018? Man, you know, we call that up there the Emerald Triangle. There's three counties up there, uh, I say, Humboldt, Mendocino, and Trinity. And those counties, when you look at them on a map, look like a little triangle. And, you know, uh, everybody that smokes marijuana and everybody that's been in the scene, we call that the Emerald Triangle up there. It takes on mythical, mythical proportions in a sense that, you know, let's just riff here a touch. Um, you know, there's been a lot of songs come out and a lot of slang come out and urban slang in the past few years about trees, you know, this, that, and the other. Well, I could tell you firsthand, oh, say, that it's true. The marijuana growing up in Humboldt County, Trinity County, or Mendocino County, or AKA the Emerald Triangle, those trees are trees. The one plant could be 14 feet high. Wow. One plant, one plant can produce five pounds of righteous seedless sensimia. Oh five pounds mount to a tree. Mm. The stalk is about a foot in girth. It's a tree. Wow. And uh, you put, you see, five thousand of trees in a few acres, and you walk amongst them and underneath them. It is a spiritual feeling. Hmm. Uh, so, so what happened to get back to how that all went down? How did that occur? What started that? And I could be off by a few, a year, maybe two years at the most, but I'm right on the money with it. Remember, I say in the beginning of this program, man, that we talked about uh, marijuana from Mexico, Jamaica. Panama and Colombia, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, and there's other producing regions in the world. You know, Southeast Asia, but we failed to talk about this. I'll hit on it real quick before I go back to Humboldt. Let's take a trip to Southeast Asia where my brothers and my classmates, well, I graduated from high school in 67, man. You know, the war was going strong in Vietnam. My friends would come back from Southeast Asia. They'd go over there with, with jarhead haircuts. You know, the nickname for a Marine mm-hmm. is a jarhead, jarhead. Because when they give you a haircut, it looks like they put a jar on your head. <laughs> and uh, and uh, those cats would come back, man, they'd be freaks. They would smoke the finest Thai weed. Mm. <laughs> and they would smuggle it back, man, when they'd come back here on leave and turn us hippie boys onto it, college students, uh, you know, whatever. And that marijuana was tops. It would rank right up there with the Jamaicans, the great Mexicans, the, the, the wonderful Colombians, and, and the Panamas and things like that. So there was growing all over the world. But what happened here was very specific in the sense that that region up in Humboldt, Mendocino, and Trinity County, uh, Mendocino County borders the Pacific Ocean. Mm. And now it's a wine growing area, okay? So grapes like marijuana, they like warm, hot days, and they like to be cooled off. The plants like to be cooled off at night. I was not aware of that. So what better to cool off a plant than those ocean breezes when the sun goes down on the California coast and the little bit of fog rolls over the hills, it's damp, it's cool. Those plants love to be cooled down. And then when the sun comes up, it's blazing. Now, you got to realize that, that that soil up there is just primo soil. Primo. Mm. You know, you can grow love. If you had a seed called love and you put it in that soil, you could grow love up there. So, uh, it's that easy because it's just so perfect for everything. The environment's perfect. The temperatures are perfect to grow the finest marijuana in the world because marijuana likes a temperature between X and why it likes to be cooled down in the evenings, and it flourishes. Okay, not too much rain in the summer, if any, because that could create some sort of mold. Mm. 
You know, so they're mold free, man. They can grow from April. They plant in April, maybe March, maybe mid April, and they typically harvest a week or two before Halloween. So, you know, you're not getting any rain up there typically, okay? You're goddamn marijuana. So what had happened, man, historically, brother, with the evolution of marijuana in California was by 1975, we're still smoking Mexican, Jamaican a little bit. You know, it was harder to get because it came from so far away. But Mexican was right at our border, Mexico. The GIs were bringing the shit back from Thailand, uh, from from the Vietnam War, and the Colombian weed was a little bit sparser, this, that, and the other. But what happened socially in the Bay Area in the, around 1975 was the bloom was off the rose, so to speak. The 60s of the beautiful people and, you know, psychedelic drugs and wonderful marijuana and free love and dancing in the streets and brotherhood and sisterhood and all that by 1975 was no more. It was way no more by 1968, but it hit hit rock bottom by 1975. There were so many hard drugs in the Bay Area, heroin, you had methamphetamine, and you know like I know, anytime there's methamphetamine, there's shit sure to hit the fan. You're goddamn right. You know, it's an evil, ugly, friggin' high that does not, no good for nobody. Heroin, you have to steal to get it to keep your fix going. So you had robberies going on. You had people ripping people off. You had drugs, you know, hard drugs happening, lots of alcohol. People were beginning to abuse the beginnings of, a, of, of drug abuse was starting to hit the middle class uh, 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 and the ghetto people, uh, cats of color, were starting to get uh, abusing everything, uh, and and so were the white folks. And it was just a bad time economically. People weren't working in the Bay Area. It was tough. There were gas wars. Gas was going up. People weren't working. The war was dragging on and just getting over. We had to kick a president out of office. It was bleak times, man. So what we call the beautiful people, this is my point, the beautiful people of the 60s in San Francisco, the musicians, the musicians' girlfriends, people that worked with their hands, people that wrote poetry, people that were just cool vibe people, people that were really trying to seriously expand consciousness, were fed up with a low vibration of the city life, of, San, of urban life, San Francisco, Oakland. You know, so what they did is they went north, so say. They went up to Humboldt. They went up to Mendocino. They went up to Trinity, where land was cheap, redwood trees, air was perfect. You could swim naked in the rivers and the lakes, and you were far enough away from the city, man, where nobody would hassle you. So these people, still wanting to get high on marijuana, most of them not abusing anything at, the, at that time and space. Just people that were into mushrooms, LSD, and good marijuana. Marijuana is a daily thing. A mushroom trip might be a monthly thing. An LSD trip might be a monthly thing. But marijuana was used every day of every moment. Smoke weed every day. Uh, and those people went up there and they just threw the seed. Basically, took the Mexican seeds as they saved the Colombian seeds that they saved, the Jamaican seeds that they saved, and uh, uh, the, the Thai seeds from Southeast Asia that they saved, and they basically planted gardens for themselves. Mm -hmm. And the shit grew, and it grew well, because the conditions were perfect. Then they would come down to the city, I would imagine. You know, they'd come down to see, they still had friends in the city, or they'd come down to hear a concert, or they'd come down to catch a, you know, get a great meal from being 100, 150 miles, you know, away up in, you know, where, the, you know, it was rugged area and come down here and celebrate. And they'd bring, they would bring, like I said, marijuana was a social drug. And if you had good marijuana, the first thing any, any cool head would want to do was call you up and say, oh, say, man, I got a bag of this shit from Northern California that you're not going to believe my brother. Let's go get a good meal. Let's fire up and go get a good meal. I want to turn you on to this. 
And so they would come here and turn other people on, and people would say, wow, where did you get this? I've never smoked anything like it. Well, man, it's sensamia. What's sensamia? Well, the grower would say sensamia means without seed.